uh, today we're going to talk about everything Star Wars spacecraft. We're going to talk about the science behind them, what's plausible and what's not. <laughs> So without further ado, we're going to take it from the beginning, episode one, The Phantom Menace. Well, that didn't take long. So let's talk about sound. What is sound? All that sound is, is vibrations in the air. Those vibrations are interpreted by our brain as sound. So if there's no air in space, that means there's also no sound, and we can't have sounds like this. But of course, that would make for an extremely boring movie, like... Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. These aircraft have what's called control surfaces. These control the roll, pitch, and yaw of the aircraft. The way that these control surfaces work is deflecting the air in a certain direction that causes a moment to turn the aircraft. But, since there's no air in space, you can't have control surfaces like that. In my last video we talked about Newton's first law. But what we didn't talk about is there is a second part to the law. An object that is in motion already will stay in motion in that same direction unless acted upon by another force. So in our case, in space, there's no other forces such as air acting on it to slow it down. So it will continue in the same direction to infinity and beyond. or until another force acts upon it. That's why in space, with spacecraft, we have to apply a certain force to change the direction. There's a couple different solutions to this. One of these solutions would be to apply a thrust in one direction, such as this. That would result in a moment that would turn the spacecraft like this. Or you could adopt what's known as thrust vectoring. Thrust vectoring changes the direction of the thrust. It's used in aircraft such as the F-35. The nozzle in the F-35 has thrust vectoring to enable what's known as vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. In other words, it can take off straight up. Speaking of vertical takeoff and landing, we see time and time again in Star Wars that these spacecraft that only have thrusters on the back of the spacecraft somehow take off vertically and land vertically. We've seen this addressed a few times, such as in The Mandalorian. Alright, let's stop right there. Nothing explodes in space like this. To understand why explosions aren't like this in space, we first have to understand what is an explosion. In chemistry, we learn that an explosion is a combustion reaction. A combustion reaction is what happens when you mix a fuel source and oxygen together. When you add energy to this system, they react to form carbon dioxide and water, often in the vapor form. This violent reaction is often manifest with fire. The reason that we wouldn't see this in space is because there's no oxygen. And if there's no oxygen, we don't get... But if we're just being honest, it wouldn't be as exciting to see a spaceship break apart in silence. Next we have this scene from the movie All About Sand. I don't like sand. If I'm being honest, the first time I saw this scene, it blew my mind. The visual and the sound effect of this seismic charge are so cool. But if I'm being honest, in retrospect, this seismic charge doesn't make any sense in space. Why would they engineer a bomb to only blast out in a two-dimensional plane? It makes it so easy for Obi-Wan to avoid. The lethality and effectiveness of an explosive weapon like this largely lies upon its blast wave. In almost all explosive weapons, the blast wave will move out in a spherical shape. If this were the case with the seismic charges, it would not have been so easy for Obi-Wan to avoid. However, in theory, if the seismic charge worked like a normal explosive device, this would be an extraordinarily effective weapon in space. In fact, I actually believe that this type of weaponry would be something similar to the explosives that we would see in space if they decided that kind of warfare was best for them. Since we know that explosive devices don't work the same in space, 
it would actually look something more similar to a seismic charge. Except we wouldn't hear the sound. We're actually seeing it. Clearly these space battles were inspired by historic naval battles. But this strategy in space actually wouldn't pan out. It makes sense for ships to fight this way on the water because they're all working in the same two-dimensional plane. But in space, we don't have the same restrictions that we do on the water. Since all the ships are not floating on a body of water, they could actually move in any direction and attack from any side. So lining up the broadsides and shooting each other with guns wouldn't make a lot of sense in space. So let's talk about light speed. First of all, what is light speed? In engineering, we denote light speed as C. So light speed is literally 670,616,629 miles an hour, or 186,282 miles per second. It's so fast, it only takes light 1.3 seconds to travel all the way to the moon. It took the Apollo missions three days to do the same thing and they were traveling at 25,000 miles an hour. Light is able to travel this fast because it travels in tiny little packets called photons. These little packets of light are so small they have no mass and therefore are not considered matter. Scientists have been attempting to achieve the speed of light with a particle accelerator. Even utilizing a particle accelerator Scientists have only been able to achieve 99.9999999988% the speed of light, but we cannot exceed the speed of light. Even if somehow we could accelerate an object as big as a spaceship to approach the speed of light, it would take over 100,000 years to cross just our galaxy. But somehow, they're able to do it in mere hours in Star Wars. That's impossible! Yes it is, Luke. With the technology that we have today, faster than light travel or FTL travel is theoretically impossible. But there are some ways that we can get around this. Some smart dude a long time ago named Einstein theorized that we could actually bend space and time itself. His theory was proven correct when just a few years ago we observed two black holes colliding together with enough force and energy to bend space and time. If we were somehow able to bend space and time at will, theoretically, we could move forward through space and time faster than the speed of light. The Star Wars canon never actually explains how they achieve light speed. However, in Star Wars Legends, it's explained that some sort of fictitious fuel source is used to propel the ship into what's known as hyperspace. This hyperspace is sort of an alternate reality where you can go through space, which would normally take thousands of years to traverse, in mere hours. In essence, it's a wormhole, which is also a theoretical way to traverse the galaxy. Thanks so much for watching guys, please let me know it down in the comments below what you want me to react to next. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more content just like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Godspeed.